My name is Mr. Fernando, and I am here with the Chicago Public Library Little Village Branch. Have you ever wondered how owls see the world or why their eyes are so big? In today's activity, we are going to be making an owl eyesight viewer. And we're going to learn a bunch of fun facts about owls, their eyes, and their vision. There are over 200 species of owls. Most of them are nocturnal. They are birds of prey, meaning they hunt for food. Owls have huge eyes. Depending on the species, owl's eyes can account for up to 3% of its entire body weight. In comparison, humans only account for about 0.0003% of our weight. That's a huge difference. Like all birds of prey, owls have forward-facing eyes, meaning they, they move, they see across, straight ahead. Um, this allows them to have a much greater range of vision than animals with eyes on the sides of their heads. We'll discuss vision in more detail in just a moment, but did you know that owls' eyes are shaped like tools? Yes, their eyes are not round like ours. Owls can't roll or move their eyes. They can only see straight ahead. Bony structures in their skulls called sclerotic rings hold their eyes in shape. Though they can't move their eyes, owls have the ability to turn their head 135 degrees in either direction, which accounts for a total of 270 degrees of movement. They can also turn their heads up and down 90, 90, 90 degrees uh, and they're able to do all of this without moving their shoulders. Owls have three eyelids. The upper eyelid closes downward when the owl blinks. The lower eyelid closes up when the owl sleeps. And the third eyelid is called a nictitating membrane. It is a thin layer of tissue that closes diagonally across the eye from the inner eye to the outer, from the corner to the outer. This membrane is translucent, meaning it's see-through, and it helps clean and protect the surface of their eyes. Owls have binocular vision. Binocular vision describes the ability to see an object with both eyes at the same time, giving an animal increased depth and perception. This means the owl can see objects in three dimensions and can judge distances in similar way to humans. They also have excellent night vision. The field view for an owl is about 110 degrees with about 70 degrees being binocular vision. By comparison, humans have a field view that covers 180 degrees with 140 degrees being binocular. Birds with eyes on their sides, on the other, on the other hand, have a much larger field of vision, but their binocular vision is much, much more limited. Lastly, owls are farsighted, meaning they can see they can they can see distant objects clearly, but objects that are closer may be blurry, and they see in limited color or in monochrome. So for today's activity, you're going to need two paper plates, scissors, if you have it, a craft blade or utility blade, pencil glue, two uh, pieces of toilet roll paper. If you don't have toilet roll paper, you could also use a towel uh, roll. You would just need to cut it in half so that you could have two pieces. If you have a ruler, paint and brushes for decoration, and tape. So let's get started. So the first step is um, if you have a ruler, you can go ahead and measure it so that you, what we're trying to do is we're trying to cut out a third of the plate. I already measured this plate um, and I made a line with a pencil. So now we're just going to cut it. So you're going to cut the piece. and try to make it a clean cut. And you are going to need the, the, the leftover piece. Um, so you can do, what you would do is you can use this to trace the next, page, the next plate. 
that way you don't have to measure it. You can just make a line and cut that. I already have a pre-cut piece, so we'll use that. The next step though is, I forgot to mention, um, you need something to make the eyes. So you can use a quarter or something that's round and of similar shape. I would definitely go bigger, but not smaller. So with a quarter, we're going to draw two eyes and you kind of want to make sure they're in the middle of the plate. So I'm going to draw two eyes. With a quarter. And then the next step is probably the hardest part. Um, it's possible to use scissors to cut out the holes but it's just so much easier to use a blade. If you do have a blade, ask for adult supervision because these are very sharp and it's really easy to cut yourself. So I'm gonna use a blade instead of the scissors, but it is possible to use scissors if you don't have a blade. Um, so I'm gonna cut, cut out the two holes that I've made. Once I have the first one out, cut out the second one. And now you have your two eyes. And the same thing, how we use this to, as a template to get your second line, you can use this as a template to make your other eyes. So um, I already have a, another piece that I had cut out the eyes. So at the end, you're gonna have two pieces with eyes and you should have the two leftover um, thirds. The next step is these two thirds. You're going to basically, again, you, don't, you can measure them if you want to, but you don't have to. You're gonna cut them in half. Two of these are going to be the years, and then the other two are going to be for the face. So again, using the quarter, you can trace, trace a hole for the eyes. And you're going to uh, do that with the other piece as well. Um, again, I use the blade. I have two pre-cut pieces. Again, I use the blade because it's just easier. The, uh, the last two pieces are for the years. For this, um, I did want to make them smaller, so I am going to cut about a half an inch strip just so they're a little bit thinner. And now that we have all our pieces cut, the next part is we're going to start actually making the binocular. For that part, you will need your um, toilet paper roll. So I, I went ahead and you wanna make a cut and then you wanna cut away, I'd say about an inch, because you don't need all that, all that much. Then about a cut an inch and using again your first plate or the second, doesn't matter. You're going to roll up the tube, stick it into the hole, make sure it's even, and hold it. I already have some pre-cut pieces of tape and we're going to tape it down. Now we can take that out and then tip the rest of the roll or the tube. And you wanna do the same thing with the other roll. After you have two tubes, what you're going to do is, you're going to make four cuts, about a half an inch. So one cut and then one opposite of that. 
and then one at top. So you're basically kind of, kind of like cutting sort of like a cross shape. Then you would fold them back. They're gonna go in the plate. Oh, I fold the other way around. So they have to go this way. So they gotta go this way and Next step, next step is you're, you're taping down the tabs. And you're gonna do this with the other tube as well. So I already have one that I had um, added already the tubes to. So this one's ready to go. Um, at this point now, um, what we're going to do is we're going to decorate our, our pieces. So these are the pieces. There should be five pieces total that need to be painted. The main face, part of the eyes and the ears. Um, so you can paint those and make sure you wait for them to dry. Um, I painted some earlier. So here are my pieces. And then if you have a third plate or um, scrap paper, you can also cut out a piece of, another piece for like a nose. So now the next step is we're gonna start assembling it. So using glue, we're going to tape first the ears, and then this is for the, the back part of the plate. So. You might need to hold them, hold it for a while so, so it uh, dries. And then you're going to do the same thing with the other year. You don't need a lot. The more glue you use, the, the, the longer it's going to take to dry. So again, hold it for a few seconds so the glue can start adhering. And then you can set that aside while, it, while that dries. We're going to glue what I would say are kind of like the eyebrows or eye part of the owl. Again, this glue doesn't want to come out. All right. I'm going to just glue around the eye. Hold it for it to adhere properly. And you wanna obviously line it up, you wanna line it up with the with the holes from the first from the plate. So it should look something like that. Um the last part, um, so for this one, I, I just use a piece of scrap paper. So for the nose, if you don't have an extra plate, you can just cut out a piece of paper. For this, I had a third plate, so I just cut out like a triangle. And we're going to tape, glue that. And then the final part is we're going to glue the front to the back. So for this, you're just gonna use a bunch of glue. I think it's running out. So 
So for this, you do need, need quite a lot to make sure that it's, it sticks. Taking in, bringing it, you're lining it up. And then this is gonna take a while, but you're basically, you're holding it to make sure all the glue sticks. If you feel like you missed the spot, you can add, add more glue. But that's our finished product. Let it let it dry properly before you um, take it and explore. So to recap, we've learned that owl eyes are tooth shaped and are held in places by things by bony structures called sclerotic rings. Um, they kind of look like small little solo cups if you uh, take a look. Um, they have three eyelids, including a nictitating membrane, which closes diagonally. Um, maybe, hopefully, you can kind of see it, but that's the nictitating membrane here that closes this way. And they have binocular vision, which is the ability to see objects with both eyes at the same time. So let's take a look at the masks or the eye viewers we made. So the tools are like the sclerotic rings, and when you put when you test them, you can kind of see that um, it's one circle, which is that accounts for the 70% of the binocular vision. Um, and then you see that there's a left and right that kind of gets blurry and you can kind of see that when you're looking through these, I would say experiment. Um, the first mask that I did, the tubes are longer. I think I like this one better. Um, experiment using it outside, um, trying to see different objects, see if, if, um, if one works better than the other. There's all, all kinds of ways that you can change the design to see if you get different results. So for this activity, I use the following books. White Owl Barn, Barn Owl by Nicola Davis, Owls by Nikki Glaus Grace, and Eye to Eye, How Animals See the World by Steve Jenkins. Thank you for watching. We hope you had fun with today's activity. Join us next time for more craft and STEAM activities. Goodbye.